Can I be outrageous and say something positive about this country? Britain is a diverse, creative, productive and aspirational society. We sit comfortably between the free market zeal and Wild West Darwinism of America and big state protectionist Europe. In the decades since the war, we've more or less got the balance about right. And we have a thriving service-based economy incubated in the 80s under Margaret Thatcher, which now future-proofs our economy as the West moves away from heavy industry. As we continue to thrive in the worlds of banking, insurance, tourism, media, financial services, agriculture, science, telecommunications, aerospace, marketing, fashion and the creative industries, countries like Germany, which we once envied, are highly reliant on heavy manufacturing, which is becoming an outdated business model. Don't take my word for it. The Center for Economics and Business Research, the snappily titled CEBR, have predicted Britain's status as the world's fifth largest economy will remain intact in spite of the shock caused by the pandemic and our departure from the EU. By 2035, they say, the British economy is forecast to be 23% larger, 23% larger than that of France. It's also predicted we'll catch Germany within two decades. More good news, Britain can easily borrow on the international bond markets. With a credit rating so good, we make Bill Gates and Jeff Bezos look like a risky bet. Our national debt, whilst too high for my liking, is a fraction of that in France, Italy and Spain. And if we have five years of economic recovery, tackling inflation and living within our means, the deficit in which we spend more than we receive in income will be eradicated. And in a decade, we can get the national debt back to where it needs to be. All of this is doable with common sense, a bit of fiscal tough love and political will. I know his great crime is being married to a billionaire, but I still believe that Rishi Sunak is the right person to do that job as chancellor. Look, I know his wife's loaded, but he is a self-made man and a perfect example of what this country is all about. Sunak is a British success story. It doesn't stop there. Britain is a global beacon of diversity, a relatively harmonious melting pot of religions, races, cultures and values. The famously tolerant British mindset means that for centuries, when people have landed on these islands, we have not bent them to our will or sought to delete who they are and what they believe. France, for example, is quite different. It's an egocentric culture in which if you don't do things the French way, you're sidelined, which is why they have a two-tier society in which racial and cultural tensions are a daily reality. You're either French or you are one of les autres, the others. Whereas we are all Brits. That's right, we are all Brits here in Blighty. You come here and you can be who you want to be. Of course, there are integration challenges not helped by the daily influx of illegal migrants across the channel, which bankrolls the business model of human traffickers. If you tolerate what's happening in the channel, you stand with those murderous thugs making millions on the back of human misery and death. Things are far from perfect here. The evil of racism is pervasive in all societies, including our own, and we must fix it. But name me one country in the world that's generally more tolerant and more inclusive than the United Kingdom. Show me a country more open and more welcoming to other cultures. Good luck with that. Britain is a creative powerhouse. We gave the world the music of the Beatles and the words of William Shakespeare. British public life is pretty world-class too. We have an iconic, globally recognized head of state in the Queen someone who has been a steady hand at the tiller for seven decades and has been an amazing guardian of our robust constitution, which has stood the test of time. Of course, we've got plenty of numpties in Parliament, but no serious issues around corruption in public life. We have a renowned free press and the greatest justice system on the planet. We have a welfare state, free education and free health care at the point of need. And we don't have the dysfunctional situation of America where you need a war chest of hundreds of millions of dollars 
to run for high office. John Major, a man of humble origins and some would argue humble talents, actually failed his job interview as a 20-something to be a bus driver, but went on to achieve the highest office in the land. We have a vibrant democracy which surprises the world. Regularly, all the time in fact, with its outcomes. From the hard left socialism of Callaghan in the 70s, to the economic neoliberalism of Thatcher in the 80s. There she is, the Iron Lady. You go from Cool Britannia and Tony Blair in the 90s to the Eton educated man of the people, Boris Johnson, tearing up the political map in 2019. We don't do boring, do we? And what better example of our democracy can there be than Brexit, which, love it or hate it, was a democratic triumph. The largest plebiscite in our history, it delivered a decisive result, fulfilling the desire of a majority of Brits to have national self-determination. As the Ukrainians have proved, with their remarkable courage in the face of the appalling bully Putin, national pride, patriotism and identity are key to the success of any country. Which is why supposedly trivial things like the flag are actually so important. Not a view shared by everyone, of course. Here is the BBC's wokester-in-chief, multi-millionaire presenter Gary Lineker, saying that he doesn't think much of flags. I've really tried hard, he said. I've tried hard, but I just can't get excited by flags. Any flags. They're just pieces of cloth with a stick, right? Does it make me a bad person? I'm as patriotic as anyone. But flags? Now, a Union Jack stick, of course, a rock, absolutely. So he doesn't like flags unless he's being paid a small fortune to wave one for a menswear advert. I'm actually wearing a TM Lewin shirt. The truth hurts. Or what about this ex-Labour MP, Laura Pidcock, who doesn't think the flags to celebrate the Queen's Jubilee are particularly tasteful? Take a look at this. I just feel like there's a real grossness to the state-driven Jubilee celebration fanfare. That's right. Your celebrations, folks, are gross. She says people are skint, getting so much more skint, full of worry. And we're supposed to go out and celebrate 70 years of unadulterated, unaccountable wealth, privilege, power and exploitation. Nah. Well, here's what I've got to say about your tweet. Nah. Nah. Britain has been mocked in some quarters for its excitement about blue passports. Here's the Home Secretary showing one off. There you go. It's a blue passport. Now, why does the colour of a passport matter? Because it's redolent of when Britain was an independent sovereign nation. Don't forget, we got conned into EU membership in 1973 with the promise of free trade. We didn't know that it would morph into an all-encompassing, monolithic political project. So the blue passport couldn't be more important. The changing shade of our travel documents from red to blue symbolises a bold new direction for this country. A tantalising promise of a return to Britain's former glories, of which there are plenty, and the embracing of the huge opportunities that lie ahead. The news this week that we will soon be able to legally use imperial measurements, if we so wish, pounds, ounces, feet, inches, yards, pints and miles, is another development which has been seized upon by those who would seek to do this country down. Surprise, surprise, one such person is Labour MP Angela Eagle. She said, oh dear, literally attempting to weaponise nostalgia for a time few can remember and even fewer wish to return to Pathetic. I'm sorry, it's not pathetic, Angela Eagle. Imperial measurements like pounds and ounces are tied into the fabric of this country, its culture and its history, which is why the likes of Angela Eagle can't stand it, because these progressive figures on the left don't like Britain at all. A point made by the famous lifelong socialist George Galloway on this very show last night. There he is, gorgeous George. And they will no doubt be sneering at working class people who roll out the bunting for the Queen's Jubilee next weekend. And they've got form on this. Exhibit A, Emily Thornbury. She's got Thornbury on this herself. Take a look. Here's her pompous tweet about the England flag and a white van in 2014. And here's the Sun's coverage of that story at the time. Only here for the sneers. What a great headline. 
You see, they just don't get it, do they? Bring on the blue passports and imperial measurements, at least for those that want to use them. And the reason why I back this is for one reason and one reason alone, because all of these things are British. Let's have ounces as well as grams. Let's have inches as well as centimetres. Mrs Dolan can only dream of inches. And let's have stones as well as kilos. Pound for pound, Britain is the greatest country in the world. We are inching our way to international glory as a sovereign nation. Those who criticise us haven't got an ounce of common sense. We're miles better than the competition. So what is the greatest unit of measurement in this country? Well, it's not the litre, is it? It's the humble pint. There you go. It's one of those. Let's drink to Great Britain. Cheers.